guys, are you lot having a good time? Yeah. I'm so glad to be here. I rushed to get here. I didn't know what to wear, like to wear something, you know, long or short. And, and that was just something to wear on my head. So <laughs> I'm from Brixton, you guys. Is anyone from Brixton? Anybody? Oh, you're from Brixton. I thought you was quite loud. All the people from Brixton are quite loud. Did you drive down? No, no? okay, so you flew. You look like you flew. Was it on a broomstick or...? <laughs> I'm only playing, I'm only playing. You've been lovely this evening. Thank you. So, I live in Brixton with my two flatmates. They're disgusting people. They don't pay the rent. They're nasty. Whoever, who lives with somebody that don't pay rent? You live with people that don't pay rent. Yeah, nasty. They get up every day, they got somewhere to go. They manage to find something to spend their money on, but not your rent. Lambeth is our local council, and Lambeth wrote to us and said they were gonna evict all of us, and I told Lambeth, it's those two people over there. They're waste people, they do nothing. And Lambeth wrote back to me and said, they're my kids. <laughs> How I have to look after them. They use this word like responsibility. Ah. I'm trying to look it up. I don't know what it really means. So, yeah. So it's, I, I got a new job, you guys. Yeah. Because before I was broke, right? But now I'm working. I'm working at a bank, putting money in the bank, working at a bank. So I'm very, very happy, which makes my comedy quite hard because I usually do better comedy when I'm upset, when I'm bitter, when I'm stressed. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's when the comedy really comes out. But I'm kind of content, so let's see how this goes. But I'm still single. I'm still single, yeah. I like to be consistent. That's what it is. I was single last year. I was single the year before that. And the year before that as well. Do you see? So I stay consistent, because why change it up? Why? Why are we changing it up for? But today, I've seen that some decent men in the audience like you, sir. You make me want to do the running man. That's what you make me want to do. I just want to do the shuffle when I see you, man. I don't see a lot of men doing enough of themselves, like black men doing enough of themselves. Because I've been single, I've been hanging out with, like I learned a new word since I started comedy. It's called waste man. I didn't know that word until I started doing comedy, but it is a thing. There are these men that go out and they just waste your time. <laughs> they ain't got no job and nothing to offer you, but they're attached to some big dick that doesn't stay hard for very long. Doesn't stay hard for very long. It's, it's a trick dick, that's what I call it. It's a trick dick. That's what it is, a trick dick, that's what it is. But um, I started a new job, like I told you guys. I help accountants to become um, accredited so that they can actually do their jobs properly. And I love my job because I'm helping other people do stuff. And I love helping people. So like sometimes when I'm on the tube, I'm on the train, I'm sitting with my friends and their lips are dry and crusty. <laughs> you know what you do initially? You lick your own lips. <laughs> because you can't tell no one about themselves until you fix yourself. Yeah, that's the spirit of the Lord speaking to you right there. You can't tell your friend that their lips are dry and crispy until you lick your lips first. So you do that to show your friend, like, we're talking, your lips are dry, I lick my lips and look in your eyes. <laughs> You're supposed to do the same thing, but sometimes they don't. So their lips are still dry and crispy. Then what do you do to show support? You go into your bag and you get lip balm. Not to share, because you don't know where their hands have been. You put lip balm on your own lips, in it, and you look in their eye while you're putting it on, hoping that they too will cream their lips or something, but they don't. They don't. They leave their lips to be dry and crispy while they're speaking to you. I don't know what that's about. It's disgusting. I don't know why. And breath. Bad breath. Bad breath in the office, at work or anywhere is unacceptable. No one wants to hear what you've got to say when you've got bad breath. You could be on fire. Burn. Burn. <laughs> because you're either gonna tell me and then I'll be burning in my chest. <laughs> Some people's breath is so bad, you can see that it's burning the hairs in your actual nostrils and hurting your chest. You might have important things to say, I don't want to know. Maybe I'm about to hurt myself, but your breath stinks, leave me to hurt myself. Cause God's trying to show me something, let him show me it, not through your breath though. Brushing your teeth is very, very important. I noticed some people just like to skip it. I don't know why. And then why is it that when they talk, they're the ones who want to come and whisper? Why do you whisper? <laughs> with your hot breath. You shouldn't be whispering. And sometimes you could be talking with your friends and you're happy. 
and then they come and laugh too. And now you're gone from <laughs> confusion. <laughs> confusion. That's what the bad, bad breath causes. It causes confusion. Mm, nasty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been single for a long time. I don't mind being single, you guys. I, I don't go to bed crying, asking God why I'm single. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah, I don't go to church praying for a man. No, I pray for my edges to grow back because it's important for you to have edges. Yeah, ladies all know that. If you want to tie your hair in a ponytail and you've got no edges, you can't do that. So I've got children. Um, I remember growing up in the 80s. Does anybody grow up in the 80s? Any of you guys grew up in the 80s? I did. I grew up in a time, like, my mum's a gangster. My mum's African, but she's gangster at the same time. My mum does this. When you, she's about to tell you, that means she's going to beat you, basically. She's going to beat you. My mum only had to give me one look. One look, put the thing down, sit up straight and stop what you're doing. Nowadays, you give your kid one look, they're looking at you back like, what fam? What, we live in the same house? What, you got something to say? What, come on then, let's go. That's how my kids are gangster kids. It's very, very hard to discipline gangster kids. I noticed that kids have an attachment with their phones. If you take away their phone, they seem to feel some type of way. But the thing is, when I take away my kid's phone, I feel some type of way too, because I'm paying for a phone you can't use. I can't, I can't tell you to put the rice on because I've got your phone. So it's very hard to discipline your kids. You don't want to beat them. They might slap you back. Back in the day, you never thought of slapping your mum back, even dodging it. Even dodging the blows that she was about to give you made her feel like you. What are you blocking the, the, the slaps for? Huh? You are blocking it. Sometimes when you're blocking it, they think you're attacking them as well, isn't it? And all you're trying to do is live. <laughs> That's all you're trying to do is live. Sometimes I don't even know why my mum was cussing me. Yeah, because she just used to cuss me for fun and I wasn't allowed out. Africans, let your kids out sometimes. <laughs> uh? Otherwise we start to become manipulative and we start saying stuff like, I got after school club, I'm going back to school. <laughs> Um, Mum, I'm going back to school tonight at nine because they're doing maths classes at nine. <laughs> yeah, so I need to go back and catch up on my maths. And unless it's about maths or learning, they ain't letting you out. Um, the other thing I should tell you is that my name's Muriel. I don't know if you guys knew, but I was introduced as Miss Mo Real, but my real name's Muriel, and I think that's a very African name. It is, isn't it? Because there's only me in this room called Muriel right now, isn't it? <laughs> Does anybody know anybody else called Muriel? White people, come on, come on, white people. An auntie, a grandma, great grandma, a great, 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 great grandma, no, no, no. No, your crowd camera crew, nobody called Muriel, you see? So I feel African, because often when you are African, you're usually the only one in the office called Yemi, Yomi, Yami, Adeyoa, and all of that, do you understand? The best thing about my job at the moment is that I'm the only one that can do what I do. That's the best thing. And I've got a little department that I get to develop and it's made me think on other levels. But what I don't like is, like when I bring my food in, it's winter time now, I don't care what you lot think, it's cutting outside. So I bring in soup, yeah, not fufu, just soup. <laughs> yeah, I don't bring yam and ebba and all of that, I'm not trying to scare people. I just bring in soup and bread, stuff that they can relate to. So I brought in some soup and um, one of my friends, let's call her Becky, just for the sake of being, you know, typical. Becky came in and she was like, mm, this smells so lovely. <gasps> Muriel, what is it? So I made some soup, Becky, I made some soup. And um, she goes, oh, I want to taste it. Let me taste some. So I was like, yeah, taste it. So she tasted it. She goes, oh, oh, it's hot. Oh, oh my God. Oh, what's in it? Oh, hot. I'm like, calm down, that's water that you're drinking. <laughs> My soup is over there, it's still in the microwave, Becky. Let me at least heat it up for you so you can say that it's hot. Anyway, my name's been Miss Muriel. I hope you've enjoyed having me.